right, we are live, and today we got my guest from the McAllister uh, show. Hello, uh, McAllister. Can you... Hello? You're cutting out a little bit there. Yeah, you know, like, I don't think the connection... Yeah, the f connection is not super great. Um, I think it think might be my side, or just the fact that we are on opposite sides of the planet. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, it, it's it's good enough. I think we can probably get through it. All right. Uh, so you know what? What's what's the typical plan uh, for an American on the fourth of July? Is it like a big barbecue or? Uh, I mean, that is like the stereotypical uh, American way to celebrate Fourth of July. Yeah. Um, usually, if I celebrate, I like to be with family. Um, we do like burgers or you know have beers. Uh, I actually started the tradition this year um, to start smoking a cigarette because, or not cigarette, a cigar, because um, I quit smoking cigarettes. Um, kind of defeats the purpose, I know, but it's kind of like a celebratory thing for me to, to smoke a cigar. So I'll probably be doing that this year. Um, a lot of the 4th of July um, fire, fireworks and all that stuff has been closed down due to COVID. I think there are a couple area or a couple nearby suburbs and areas who are doing fireworks, but that's pretty scarce. So I think this year it's going to be a lot of people going out to eat. Um, smaller gatherings i think that's probably gonna be a majority of what is going on this year but um yeah a lot of fireworks a lot of food and a lot of you know shooting off guns and shit so good time <laughs> wow that sounds actually like really cool hello you still there yeah i'm still here you can uh, you can hear me okay yeah right. that sounds like a really cool uh, cool tradition i was surprised to learn that it's only been a federal holiday in the u.s since 1941 even though uh, you guys became independent from uh, from the British monarch in 1776, but it's still been yeah, like well, a, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's really interesting how um how quickly things have moved. I sorry, I think you keep cutting out. Um, yeah, is it too bad to a little more than or it. too bad to continue or uh, or or is it fine? Oh, I, my problem is I don't have a direct line. Yeah. Um, like I don't have like a direct LAN. Yeah. Shit. Um. Well, we can always like you know just come back to it uh, later if uh, we can just both be connected. Well, you know, here let me try this out. Let me try. I don't know if you want if you can edit if you can cut. I might yeah, be able to just like because um, can try a hotspot here on my end. Maybe that will help me. Yeah. Like just set up a hotspot and then that way I don't have to worry about fucking. Um... Yeah. Right, bear with me two seconds here. I'm just going to grab a cable. Yep. <sighs> and there we go. Yeah. No, so I was saying that uh, that it is. Um, you know, I, that's been so I'm, you were saying before what year? I'm not yeah. trying to take. I'm just curious. What year did you say that we started doing fireworks? Because I, as an ignorant American, I actually don't know this. So no, uh, it's it's oh. always been uh, a tradition, as I understand it, to to do it. But it was just uh, first became a federal holiday in 1941. So. You have uh, uh, you've celebrated oh. all the way back since uh, since 1776, mm. where it was the original 13 colonies or 13 states that became you know independent from uh, from the British monarch. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, maybe it was still a little bit cutting out, but I think we can get through it, it's fine. Yep. Um, I think, I think what the reason for that is probably has, you said what, 1940 what? 41. 41, so I mean, that's right around World War II, so in my mind, that's probably where that correlates. Yeah. Um, well, that war was huge for our country, we they got out of debt, um, depression, uh, it, you know, kind of brought us back on top in a sense, and it was. Uh, so I, I would say I'm not a historian or an expert or anything, but I would say that's probably the correlation there. I would guess. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. Like kind of like a motivation booster for the for the people uh, in dark times. 
if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely a way to like um, give people some inspiration to get through. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I was like theorized a little bit with uh, my co-host yesterday about what would have happened if you did not go into an independence war with um, with uh, the crown, if. The U.S. today would maybe have been more like Canada, which was eventually, you know, just absolved uh, from the crown and eventually became independent anyways, just as a socialist country instead of a right-wing country or a capitalist country. You so know, so what's your question? Like, like where you, U.S. would have been? Yeah, if, where the U.S. would have been if uh, there was never an independence war happening. Well, um, things would be a lot different, that's for sure. Uh, uh, we would definitely not have the status in the world that we do now. I mean, there's no way in hell. Uh, I would actually imagine us to be... We probably wouldn't be as big. We'd probably be divided up into chunk. Um, what I think about when I think when you ask me that, um, we just had a guest on. Um, his name is David Marwichia. i saying last name right. Uh, and he was born in Kenya, and he talked about the history in that, how you know, it was a British colony and kind of the government, the, you know, just all the um, things that happened over there. And I think that we, if we had not taken those kind of moves, we'd probably be in a very similar position. That's what I would probably infer. Like smaller, smaller and less powerful. Uh, sm smaller, less people, uh, like, you know, smaller divvied up chunks, less people. Uh, there would be no, there, I mean, uh, I don't know about Denmark, but um, you know, democracy, I don't think that would uh, exist here in the U.S. I think it'd be probably more of a uh, um, parliamentary kind of... Yeah, so. I, I think so too, that it would have been way more Western European than, uh, than it is today. Mm -hmm. And smaller chunks since uh, probably, you know, Florida would maybe have remained Spanish and uh, California would have remained Mexican and the Midwest French and so on. That's, uh... Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting what's going, um, you know, all that, and kind of related to what's going on. I have a friend talk. Sorry, I didn't mean to um, real, but I had a friend uh, was making this joke to me. He said, uh, if, you know, with all the th all the protests and everything going on in America with the George Floyd that's been going on the last month, um, he said, you know, if this kind of injustice happened to white people now, we would have burned all this shit a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's no way that we would have, uh, you know, yeah. stood by this long. So I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, um, that, that's yeah. So there, it, it, it's like a cultural thing to like just be like, you know, you fuck the government, we're gonna don't take what's mine, that kind of mentality. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hear me? Yeah, I can we hear have you. an issue. Or no, I can hear you. You're okay. like dropping All out right. a little bit, but it's uh, it's fine. It's fine. I, I I think we can get through it, like you said, since it's only twenty minutes. Yeah, I think we're too, doing pretty damn good for seven hours apart, right? Yeah, well, yeah, we are. Like I would have expected it to be way more uh, way more laggy. I recently did one with a guy from um, uh, no, not Cape Town, Johannesburg in South uh, South Africa. And that was so it went surprisingly well, but then again, Africa? like South Africa, yeah. Okay. But that's sorry. Yeah, South Africa. Now you kind of know. Yeah, yeah, South Africa. Uh, but you I know used... what was interesting was that we are we were actually in the same time zone, since it's in the same um, latitude. Yeah. Oh really? Latitude. Yeah. So that's kind and, of interesting. But you still had that delay though. No, there was actually very little delay. Uh, went surprisingly, surprisingly smooth. Um, there was some delay, but still, still went fine. Not sure. Uh, yeah. Um, so what else? What else is new about Fourth of July? Uh, they were like off by the prediction by two days since they uh, estimated it to be signed and over the second of July. But then it went like you know another two days before the the declaration um, documents reached all the thirteen colonies and it was ratified in Congress. So 
for sure. Like you talk about Beckham. Yeah, I'm like back, 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 back on topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Seventeen seventy-six. <laughs> Seventeen seventy-six. <laughs> So in all in all uh, in all fair matter though it's a relatively young country, since that makes uh, America less than three hundred years old. Oh yeah, I mean, it is really kind of astounding, like how how are we? It's how to describe it, like how far we come, yet how fast we're declining. Yeah, really interesting. I think this is going to be. I think I think years from now they're gonna look at us like they looked at us. Um, you know, the Roman Empire, or Alexander the Great. Um, it's kind of I wouldn't say U.S. is is in itself totalitarian, but definitely um, it definitely carries that perception, especially across other countries. So I think it could uh, I think it could be looked at as that in the future. Um, that's just my opinion. So you think that uh, we might see like states becoming their own? countries at some point what's that last part like if you think that uh, states will become their own country uh, at some point kind of like, like uh, California have used themselves as a country of their own or uh, regarding that they, they call themselves the Republic of California sorry you're kind of cutting out a little bit on my end um, no you're just uh, 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 like I was just saying that you know that maybe we will see states becoming their own sovereign uh, countries at some point. Oh yeah, uh, like separate. Um, so I mean, for me personally, I would think that uh, yeah, I'm more of a this kind of thing all the time. So I consider myself like a Republican kind of person, but I am very liberal in a lot of my ideas. So basically. You know, there's a way and a, and a rule. And when it comes to liberal ideas, you know, liberal moral ideas tend to, you know, well, I guess. So, and I think that's kind of more that libertarian mindset. Um, yeah. So I personally, I I think that more power should be going to the states, hundred ten percent. Um, or you can just see that there's way more effect. You can look out your window and see change, and the states or the city or whatever are doing changes but when the federal government enacts things um it tends to go really slow uh, my father who was working government for a government for a long time always joked about how the u.s government is the slowest moving body in the world and it's fucking true man um the mail and everything is just so goddamn slow so i i do think it's important to try to stay with those local state governments like giving Again, more more opinion. power more power to the to the states and less interference yeah, from the federal is, government yes 110 percent um in you know kind of going back to you know fourth of july and independence day um I, that is a big part of into us doing that so i think it is important for people to remember that we don't you know uh, I don't know where it ranks, but the U.S. is one of the you know most densely populated um, places in the planet, and there seems to be there seems to be a divide. Uh, I mean, well, it's apparent and obvious that there's a divide, but um, it's just really prevalent. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I hope that we can hope we can get to a point where it's more state government. Yeah, and more uh, and more equal uh, levels of distribution of wealth. Considering there is a major class divide in uh, in the U.S. Mm. Yeah, uh, 110 percent. Um, there's no denying that. Um, the biggest problem with that is figuring out. I think the biggest problem has just been figuring out how to go about it in a way where we still uphold those constitutional rights. People are all still getting um, treated fairly or equally. I think that's a balance that we've been trying to strike. So. Yeah. Not me, but <laughs> the, the people who are enacting the laws and doing all this stuff. The people who, yeah, doing stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Trying to making it more leveled than uh, than what it is today, because uh, I, I I'm like surprised when I see like pictures of Skid Row, for instance, with fifty thousand oh, homeless yeah. people in LA, seventy thousand homeless oh, people in New York. I, so I mean, you know, that's really a 
that's the really ironic thing about um you know about america is you know most of the population lives in two states and those are california and new york um so living in des moines iowa it's really easy to kind of have a mindset where um you know government isn't or sorry i just, <laughs> I just lost some train of thought um you know it's really easy to feel that the you know you're not you don't have your voice heard um that there are two sides there are literally two states that seem to be making all the decisions i think that's the danger that could happen in a federal government so um yeah like i said i or well sorry we were talking about skid row um that's the the funny the, we're not funny it's really actually tragic the crazy thing about skid row is these um lawmakers in california have created all these laws that i live there and know but just what i heard um create these laws where they can't arrest people or do take any legal action for being homeless so kind of just just people this leeway to just you know there and then of course you know drugs rise um typhus has come back into la which is a centuries-old disease uh that comes from uh rats which comes from matter which comes from homelessness so it's a uh, it's a problem i know people who are trying to move to la and cali don't fucking stay in the midwest <laughs> yeah I'm just gonna go crazy <laughs> yeah wow but you know like don't, don't these people get like any kind of help unemployment money health care or is that you know just fuck you you don't get nothing you don't have money i'm sure i mean yeah there are plenty of government programs uh that are in place and i mean you could argue whether that's effective or not um i guess my thing is it's just i think i mean especially in an area like that there are just too many people um, you know, where does that money come from? The uh, taxes. So, you know, eventually there's a there's a tipping point where, you know, not enough people are working that money to pay the people who aren't working. So it's kind of a I think LA has really p- kind of put themselves in this loop. It's gonna be really interesting to see what happens over there. Yeah, yeah, but like LA LA still have the city have to have like plenty of money to, you know, give aid to the homeless given the amount of wealth in that in that city oh uh, i'm sure they do you know it's it's kind of the same thing with all american politics it's a lot of lobbying it's a lot of money um you know big part of the reason you know i think a big part of the reason why there are these protests this year and why americans feel disenfranchised is that they don't really have a voice in government the people that are in government are in it for oh, a very small amount of reasons one of the big ones is money you know, they make laws and they put laws into effect based on the money. Um, not to get into this too much, but it's kind of, I think it's an interesting fact with COVID, um, with the hospitals that are, um, um, that are admitting patients for COVID. They actually, um, did you know a hospital gets, so a regular hospital, when someone dies, they get about $5,000. Someone with COVID dies, they get about thirteen thousand or $13,000, about more than two and a half times that amount. So there's a there's an incentive there for you know someone who maybe dies of um, you know natural causes that happens to have COVID in their system. Um, it, it gives them incentive potentially to. Wow. Well, maybe just kind of as a COVID death when really it was just a regular death with COVID in their system. Yeah, but I don't know what the situation is over there, but America is not handling COVID well, so. No, I uh, I can see that, and, and and I think like you know like uh, large partly large parts of the reason for that is um, the politics, right? Uh, and also because oh, America yeah. can't can't afford to to shut down, and you know, uh, and also I see that your president is just showing the responsibility over to the governors, saying, well, you know, this is kind of your problems now. You're gonna do that, and I'm gonna do my thing. Which... Well, I would personally. I actually was probably one of the few people that actually agreed with that move. Um, I do think you know, kind of going back to what we were talking about with states' rights. Yeah, I think it is important to just you know because that's the thing in America. If you have a state that's shitty, like say you know you live in Michigan, the shithole of Michigan, um, you know, obviously it's hard financially to get out there, but you do have the option if the means are necessary to you know move somewhere as well. Or, you know, just, you know, other states that are financially better off. That is, you know, one of the beautiful things about living in this country. Whereas, you know, um, 
not that I know much about Denmark, but you know, it's pretty. I imagine it's pretty hard for you to move, you know, that far over. So, um, but I do think it is important that um, that we do leave it up that kind of stuff up to the states. Um, however, Iowa, for instance, uh, they did not handle the COVID well. Um, the plan that was enacted was re- just not very intelligent, and thought out. Um, our governor was actually replaced, or so it was Ted Branstad who is now the, or I don't know if he is anymore, but at one point he was bastard to China, the Trump appointed. <laughs> My butch <laughs> <laughs> Um, No, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a supporter of this, but um, it's been trained out. But yeah, it, it's, uh, it's interesting, uh, the whole thing um, with COVID. Um, Trump has not handled it well. He's been very egotistical this whole time and not really sympathetic it's gonna be really interesting what happens this election lab are you are you surprised that there isn't you know any uh national plans or state plans regarding handling events like COVID? uh my surprise no no um there's there's always the joke that americans are idiots and you know for the majority i would i would probably agree um (laughs) a lot of people in government as well uh, I think, you know, so much money has been put into military spending and so many other places. It's not a surprise that we were short in all this, um, you know. And a big part, of, a big part of the thing that was ironic is, you know, we part of why Trump came into office is, you know, we were offshoring all these jobs to China and other places. And that's kind of the thing with these masks is we ran out of supplies because we, ironically enough, were getting all of our medical supplies from China where this COVID happened. So, oh, you know, we, we had a shortage. A lot of people just ended up wearing, uh, you know, homemade stuff for the first little bit there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that is interesting. That yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people going with, like, T-shirts strapped around their face. Where is this? much. Like... Jesus Christ, the toilet paper, man. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. I, I will never forget that. Trying to go to the store. And I, the funny enough, I actually ran out of toilet paper right before that happened. Like, not, not even related. To, I just happened to be out of toilet paper, and I was. So I had to go like three different stores just to find one package. Is ridiculous. You check me out, and there are people with like ten packages of toilet paper, like for years, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Oh, was there any? There probably wasn't any. That was. Were people freaking out in Denmark about the toilet paper? Did that happen over there? No, not at all. Not at uh, not at all. It gets like, a there, was, harder. there was maybe like a couple of days of uh, of uh, freaking out and emptying shelves and stuff, but to to be truthful, I didn't notice uh, much of it. Like the the biggest notice for me was that you know that they closed the the border to Germany, which I li- live um, <clears throat> 10, 10, 15 miles from, like closed, so that there was like no way to get across. Unless you uh, you had a residence in Germany, or if you were a German working in Denmark, so you had like a valid reason to to go back and forth, mm. and that remained uh, that remained closed for uh, for a while, for months, um, which was interesting to see regarding sales, because then there came up some statistics, and suddenly there was being sold forty percent more alcohol and candy in Denmark since you know everybody would be driving over there to get it cheaper for half price or less uh, uh, I see you know yeah that's interesting in the US they actually considered alcohol like a necessity to be open because of alcoholism and you know it's so rampant in the US uh, people there'd be more people in the hospitals you know dying from um, not getting their alcohol than there would be COVID yeah <laughs> No, oh, but I, I do congratulate you guys. Like on like, it it seems like the European governments have actually handled this whole thing very well. Like you guys were very um, structured and shutting down for the most part, um, despite Italy getting really screwed. Um, yeah. But yeah, the U.S. is having issues with that. <laughs> yeah, it went uh, went fine. It went fine over here, and you know it's in uh, heavily declined over here now, and borders are opening up so it's possible to start driving from country to country and so on um yeah 
Or so, uh, I don't know if, like, what events go on in Denmark, but, like, how's, like, opening everything up? I'm curious how it's all going over there. Uh, that's going fine so far. I mean, like, the biggest spikes uh, that has come is because of, like, it's also demonstrations regarding Black uh, Lives Matter over here. And it's during these demonstrations that there is spikes in the COVID-19 um, spreading. But still, like, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. it happened. Yeah, it's it's still like it's still like majorly noticeable, and opening uh, the opening up is like still going as as usual, and restaurants are allowed to have like fifty people eating, and uh, bars mm-hmm. and this uh, are opening up. So yeah, going fine. But that, that's good. Day. I think I think the biggest challenge now in the future is probably going to be that we're going to see insanely high prices on um, uh, travel on airplane tickets when these mm-hmm. companies come back uh, for full because they're gonna they're going to have so much money they have to um, um, you know get in again to the firm considering the loss they have taken in this period and also uh, yeah it's... ferry tickets and everything. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really interesting what's uh, with the businesses and the economy. I mean, uh, like some companies, you know, like Jimmy John, Jimmy John's are like delivery places here. I'm sure they've been doing fantastic. You know, Amazon has been doing it. They've been making a shit ton of money this whole thing, which is, you know, that's a whole other you know, thing with that monolith. But you know, then there's, you know, companies like Uber. I have a friend who doesn't drive due to anxiety, and he tells me it takes him an hour to find an Uber city because no, nobody wants to drive. Everybody's so scared, you know, getting COVID. Even though I think I read that, um, oh, I don't think it, tra- it can transmit to contact services, so that's good. Yeah. But it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of the panic. So. Yeah, it is. It is for sure. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut it here. We are on 27 minutes, and I will, uh, you know, do my best to filter out what I can in, in post. And I want to say uh, thank you for taking your time today, man. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, my favorite plug really quick, just my yeah. fun stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, McAllister Hours podcast. Check that out on YouTube, Spotify, etc. We interview a lot of local people in the Des Moines area. Um, musicians, um, just very intelligent people. So everybody, please check that out. It's a good time. Yeah, I will also put a link uh, in the description to your channel. Um, so Perfect. yeah, check uh, check out uh, McAllister Hours podcast, and thank you all for watching. All right, man. <laughs>